fellow fellow truth seekers, this is Barbara Jean. Uh, <clears throat> I just wanted to tell you that I had a major confirmation that we have indeed crossed over into the next church um, dispensation. And it was just a word the Lord gave me last night, just a single word. Uh, <clears throat> um, I have to read, I had to restart this video because um, something was queued up and then my my camera froze so I'll have to do this again and I'm trying to remember what I said in my last video um, <clears throat> last night I was sitting in my chair I sat in my chair all night except for a couple hours early this morning I laid down for a couple hours and then I went and sat back down in my chair but anyway um, yesterday let me just go back to yesterday <clears throat> I was listening to um, one of my favorite channels to listen to, uh, YouTube channels, and that's Rayanne4321. I get a lot of interesting news pieces, that's what she calls her channel, news piece, uh, <clears throat> from her because she, the Lord leads her to very unusual uh, news piece or news pieces <laughs> uh, that I wouldn't normally see because I'm not really into the news so much. I, uh, I know things I just wouldn't look up or notice. And the uh, Lord leads her <clears throat> very interestingly, prophetically, into seeing certain things that most, most people wouldn't see. Um, that's where I got my uh, news about Poxitani, Poxitani, Phil, and uh, the Kansas City Chiefs. I didn't know anything about those things until she brought it up. And I went, oh, that is interesting. So anyway, just let just a little shout out to her and thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, um, I was listening to her yesterday, and she was talking about Beetlejuice, the star, and how it was likely to disappear from the constellation Orion, um, probably by the, by the end of this month. Now. That is huge news. That is huge. That is absolutely huge. Then this this morning, uh, I mean, all night long, I had woke up with a coughing fit. Like this choking spirit fell on me around 11 o'clock at night. And it lasted for a couple of minutes. Then I went back to sleep and it happened again a couple of three times. But in the midst of all this um, kind of unrest, and I was feeling quite restless, I heard the word Beetlejuice because <clears throat> I didn't think about it much after she made the told us the story about how Beetlejuice was probably going to lose its light by the end of this month um, and it's a red star uh, I didn't think about much more about it until like I said this morning like I was restless and I was sitting in my chair and while I was asleep I heard Beetlejuice now I had other dreams and, and visions going on all night long. Maybe that was what was making me restless, but nonetheless, that was the only thing that really stood out. I heard it, I think maybe I heard it more than once, Beetlejuice. So when I woke up this morning, I realized I needed to look into it, look more into it, and, and, and indeed it made sense. Suddenly I saw that this indeed was part of the puzzle and that uh, a confirmation that we have indeed crossed over into the next church dispensation and I'm going to show you why <clears throat> um, let's just go to Job 38 now I told you a long time ago that Job is a very prophetic book and it is a book about a man who thinks that he is justified in God's eyes by keeping laws and he was perfect in keeping laws and he didn't understand the meaning of justice he didn't, although he was a law keeper, he didn't understand justice. And he's accused in the, in this um, book a couple of times about perverting justice. And, <clears throat> and thinking that he had the right to judge God, he had the right to judge God. He perverted God's just, he, he perverted judgment. He perverted just, he, prefer, he perverted justice. And it's not till he actually learns to repent, he actually repents of his wrong heart that God restores him and gives him back seven times what he lost. Let me see if I can find that for you, Job. 
he repents, he confesses. And Job 42, and he hates himself for what he realizes about himself after he's faced this judgment while he's sitting in the ashes, ashes, facing God's judgment for himself, realizing that he deserved God's judgment for what he believed in his heart and his false falsities that he believed about God and about himself and about he thought he was greater than God. <clears throat> anyway, God restores to him seven times what he lost. Um, first, he prays for his friends who were in danger of having the same judgment fall on them. Um, and he takes seven bullocks and seven rams and offers them up for himself and for his friends. So that's interesting. Then there's the number seven again. Okay, so the number seven, he he's understanding his enmity for the church, his enmity for God, his enmity for God's righteousness and just, justice. Um, and he repents by offering seven bullocks and seven rams, which is really interesting. Um, and then he calls Job his servant. And everyone, he, he has to offer this offering for his friends, except for Elihu, who's the only one who told him the truth about himself. Okay, Elihu was excluded from this judgment. Um, and then he restores to him Job. Oh, okay, maybe it doesn't say seven times. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's where I was getting the number seven from, was from his, he had to sacrifice seven, seven and seven. Um, so the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning for he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and, and a thousand yoke of oxes and a thousand asses. He also had seven sons and three daughters. So there's the number seven again. And his daughters are considered fair and he also gives them an inheritance. So something has changed in his attitude towards his children, towards life, towards people, towards his friend. He's had a change of heart. He's learned about justice. He's learned about judgment. He learns about humanity. Loving is he's he's learned to love his brethren, his fellow man, and he's no longer seeing himself above everybody else. Okay, so <clears throat> but going back to Job 38, 36, 36, 38. God speaks to Job <clears throat> while Job is still in this state of quandary and not understanding why he is under judgment. God speaks to him when he finally gets an ear to hear after he's been told off by his friend Elihu. Um, he brings up the star systems. Job 38, 31. Canst thou bind the sweet influence of Pleiades or loose the bands of Orion? Canst thou bring forth Maseroth in his season, or canst thou guide Arcturus with his sons? Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven, the laws of heaven? Canst thou set the dominion thereof in the earth? Can you make uh, what's happening on earth, can, it's on earth as it is in heaven? Basically, that's what he's saying. On earth as it is in, he in heaven. Can you, can you change that so that what's in heaven is the same thing that's on earth? Can you apply equal justice for all? Can you apply equal justice for all? Are you able to do this, Job? Which is an interesting question. But he brings up these star systems, the Pallades, the seven, which are the seven sisters, which are the seven churches. Okay, the seven churches, which is the rainbow, those who are influenced by the Holy Spirit. Um, but then he brings up, can thou lose the bands of Orion? Canst thou bring forth Maseroth in his season? Or canst thou guard Arcturus with his son? Sons. Now we I told you that my that my friend, whose last name is Maserol, is almost exactly the same word as Maseroth. Spelt almost exactly the in fact, almost spelt almost exactly the same. It's it's uncanny. It is not a coincidence. Oh, this is one of the things I said in my last videos. I I said that. A lot of people, uh, this thing about coincidence, and the reason why they say everything is a coincidence, 
when the small things and little interesting things in their life happen to them, they say they, they, they chalk it up to coincidence or to chance or an interesting in, in, incident or whatever. That's because they have small G gods. That's all there is to it. <laughs> no, no. <coughs> My computer agreed. It's because they had small G gods. They they have small, they're in boxes and they think that God is so small. They put God in a box that he's not interested in the small things in our life and leads our steps so that we can see him in everything that we do. That he is leading and guiding us in our lives. And so their God is too small. That's what the problem is. They're living lives of small G gods. But the small G God, I have a great big, big G God. A big G-O-D God who sees the small things in life. And I give him credit for ordering my steps and ordering my thoughts and, and things that happen in my life so I can see that he's in everything that I do. He's there. And so therefore, I don't have a little G God. That's why I don't see that this is just a coincidence in my life. It's not. And nor should you. Because we have a big G God. A big G-O-D God. And it's time we start opening our eyes to see it. But anyway, getting back. Oh, another thing I wanted to bring up before I go on is this interesting thing about this coronavirus that's going around. Isn't this interesting? What is the name of this disease? Coronal crown. It's Satan's last attempt to steal our crown because we're heading into the last He's trying to stop. He's trying to stop his judgment. That's what he's trying to stop. But he's also trying to steal our crown. He knows he's he's heading for the end. He knows judgment's coming. He knows that there's no way he can stop what's going to, ha going to happen to him. Judgment is coming. And we are getting our crowns. And he's trying to stop it with the coronavirus. It is a weapon. Don't believe. Don't, don't, don't deny it. Once whoever put it together, whoever came up with this disease, it was intended and designed to steal our crowns, to kill the church. But they can't do it because, according to Mark 16, Christ said, "You can take up serpents and drink deadly things, and they're not going to harm you." Satan cannot override the Holy Spirit and the blood of Jesus Christ. He's trying to steal your crown and he ain't going to be able to do it. No. So getting back to what I was going to say here about... Oh, it's my... It's my mouse is, not, is unplugging. Um, so you see this in Job. You see that there's this Maseroth. And we see that there's Arcturus and his son. And it's in the belt. Of, it's in Orion's constellation. What is Orion? I looked up Orion. Orion is the hunter. Okay. Now in Orion, there are two stars that stand out particular. They, they're polar opposites to each other. There's the belt in between. And there's Regal on in, in the skirt. And there is in the upper part in the breastplate is uh, of Orion is um, Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice is a red constellation and it's going dim. It's dimming and in fact what Rian was saying it was going to uh, probably be gone by the end of this month. Its light will be completely gone. It's dimming and dimming and dimming. Now when I looked up, now this is where it's so amazing. God is amazing people. Orion is, seems to be getting brighter. It is a bright, bright what is regal? It is called regal. R-I-G-E-L. Regal. What does that sound like? Regal? Royalty? It's a bright white light star in Orion. And then you've got the uh, Beetlejuice, which is this red star. Um, devilish looking. And it's going dim. Now, think about this for a second. When I, okay, well, so I looked up, I looked up Beetlejuice, and this movie came up. 
the movie Beetlejuice. It's spelled differently from Beetlejuice the star, but it is intended to, um, it, it is a takeoff. Uh, basically, it's a spiritual, it's a spiritual thing. It's one of the spiritual things that God has allowed. I mean, Satan and his, his devilry thinks that he's tricking us, but we know something. He's just exposed something that we are now going to, we're now going to see a piece of the puzzle. Beetlejuice, the movie, is about this spirit who is a trickster. He is evil. He's a liar. He's a crafty. He, and I looked up the movie, and I looked up the movie, Beetlejuice. Let me just see if I can I get, it, get it queued up here. Beetlejuice, the movie, is about this trickster ghost. Um. Beetlejuice is very rude, crude, and perverted ghost. Uh, he gets a little crazy at times, so he seems fun on the screen, and it's clear that he's not a not a pleasant person to have around in life. He's constantly invading people's personal space, even to the point of sexual harassment, does disgusting things like spitting in his own coat, and makes rather rude gestures. Also, he likes to use well and unpopular words. Not only that, he seems to love to scare people out of their pants and pulls pranks on them. He's also quite selfish, as his main goal in the movie is to lift his curse and escape no matter who gets hurt in the process. He has the attitude of a sleazy used car salesman. Ironically, uh, he uses a corpse who eats insects instead of flies and beetles. Beetlejuice could you, could be... Um, I just think that's disgusting. I don't want to think about it. Um, interesting, although his age has never been officially confirmed, this line could be best appropri appro approximated as his age, which would make his birth at the time of the movie somewhere around mid-1300 AD if he dies in his 30s. Isn't that interesting? 30. There's the word 30. Uh, there, though there is no attempt to hide the fact that Beetlejuice is not meant to be a nice character, uh, he was pretty much a demon. He's malicious in nature. Um, so he's a trickster, conniver, gross person. Gross spirit. He's disgusting. He's a trickster. He's full of guile. Unpleasant. Dies in his 30s. Isn't that interesting? Another clue. So Beetlejuice's light is going out, is it? We see the Maseroth. What is the Orion? Orion is a hunter. He's a hunter. You know what? What is that Q is always saying? Where is Hunter? Where is Hunter? The hunter is now the hunted has now become the hunter. Who have been hunted all these years? The church, the Jews and the church have been hunted and 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 mistreated. Injustice has been done to the Jews and to the true Jews and the um, and the church injustice and now the hunter hunted have now become the hunters Orion the hunter Beetlejuice the guile that has been infiltrated into the church the church and also into Israel this spirit of beguilement the spirit of seduction the spirit of of um, trickery craftiness guile um, uh, witchcraft all these evil things have been rooted out of the true believers and now we've come into maturity and now the hunted have the hunted have now become the hunters Orion and Beetlejuice's star is fading and should be gone by the end of this month Isn't that interesting? So when they repent, when finally Job repents and he offers up a bullock and seven bullocks for himself and for his friends, he's forgiven. And that's Job 42. Seven bullocks and seven rams and burnt offerings to use himself and for his friends. They are forgiven, and then his fortune is restored, and he is he is 
um, a better man than he was before. Okay, because now he understands true justice and true judgment and it has it is God showing him the truth about himself and he finally accepting it. Revelation chapter 3 we have the church of Laodicea who thinks that their money and power and prestige is enough to save them from judgment and yet they're going to have to go through the fire and when they do so and we see in Revelation chapter uh, 6 after the rapture of the church and he seals the 144,000 they are the ones who go through the judgment they go through the judgment people Revelation chapter 7 7 Revelation chapter 7 it's not a coincidence it's a 7 you see the 144,000 they're told not to hurt the earth until they're sealed they're going through the judgment people and they are going to wake up to themselves just like Job and they're going to think what I thought our money would save us from all this I thought changing the laws would. I thought our power I thought our all the knowledge that we had I thought that all the things we accumulated would be enough to save us from this judgment it's not and they're going to wake up and they're going to repent and the hundred and forty four thousand will become these leaders of true justice not just manipulators of law they will be they will be God's true judges they will become the hunters instead of the hunted they will have learned to, to who their true enemy is they will reverse the curse of Cain which is the, the curse of injustice that star is going out <laughs> it's almost gone and this hundred and forty four thousand that's what this is all about isn't that amazing it's about they have lost their guile they've lost their trickery they are no longer going to be ruled by the spirit of guile and trickery and crudeness and rudeness it's Groundhog's Day people it's Phil waking up <laughs> it's Phil waking up to himself and realizing what true justice and what true love is is and how to be like like Christ to administer true justice that's what this is all about and Christ himself will come and have a personal relationship with these people during this time the 144,000 and those who are included in this this group of the Laodicean church they will have I, I think Christ will may even actually show up to them in person like in in the in the just like Beetlejuice is has been a controlling spirit a controlling spirit in Israel it's going dim and it's going out and now Christ the true justice the, tr the, the seal of the Father will have more have an impact on these leaders of the tribes <laughs> that are left behind and they will have this personal relationship with Christ and they will be faithful to him which is what it says in Revelation chapter 14 they are with gu without guile. These are they which are not defiled with women for they are virgins. It means that they are pure in heart. These are they which follow the Lamb wherever he goes. They follow Christ everywhere. They are faithful to him. These were these were re these were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, no Beetlejuice, no spirit of Beetlejuice. For they are without fault before the throne of God. Isn't that amazing? I'm so excited. Wow. Isn't that exciting? That's exciting. Oh, wow. What a mighty God we serve. So that's another piece to the puzzle. It's another sign. It's a confirmation. The Bible said that you would see signs in the stars, sun, moon, and stars. The, 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 the stories of the dreams of, Jesus, of Joseph was about the sun, moon, and stars. It was first about the wheat, how he's going to gather his wheat into the barns. Which is what he did. Interesting that Joseph had a dream about the wheat. What was the wheat? He went to he went to Egypt and gathered the wheat into his barn to save against time of tribulation. He first gathered his wheat. We are his wheat, which is what John the Baptist said that he would gather his wheat. We are his wheat. He saves us from the tribulation, which is what it says about the Church of Philadelphia. He will we, we will be removed from the hour of tribulation. 
than the sun, moon, and stars. The sun, moon, and stars, what do we have in Revelation chapter uh, um, 6? At the sixth seal, at the rapture of the church, he says, we see um, Revelation 6, 12, and I beheld him, he opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars fell unto the earth, even as the fig tree cast her untimely fig. This is time when Jesus deals with Israel, who were left behind, when they face judgment, and they're going, what? I thought, what? And they understand now, like Job, true justice, true judgment. And they become the judges. They become the hunter instead of the hunted. This is an amazing word. Thank you, God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Ooh, 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 ooh. I feel like doing a chair dance. <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway, I think that's all I need to say. I am just so excited. Thank you, God, for this word. It was just one word. Beetlejuice. Look it up. So I said, okay. And there it is. There's the answer. Its light is going out. The spirit of guile whew, is gone. Praise the Lord. This is the time of the Laodicean church. We have moved into a new dispensation. That dream I had about not having a voice, that's because the church of Philadelphia is going to be removed from the hour of tribulation. Plus, we're now moving into the spirit, and we're moving from the spirit of love and brotherly love and being this you know, unconditional love thing, which is what we needed to learn. We needed to learn that. But we are now moving into the spirit of judgment, which is also part of our maturity. We have to understand true justice. We have to. Sometimes we're going to have to mete out judgment. It's not all about unconditional love and forgiveness. We have to learn how to mete out justice. Okay? It's going to be a hard lesson for us because we don't, those who are <laughs> Philadelphians, we have a hard time, you know, saying, okay, well, maybe I need to judge. Those who are not saying, well, they'll be, they'll be under judgment. Well, it's hard for us. It's hard, but it needs to be done. Okay? That's part of our crown. It's part of our crown. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> I'm so excited for this word. This is amazing. Okay. So this is going to be actually a shorter vis uh, video than normal. And I'm so excited that I got it all out within a half an hour. If there's any more that I need to say, I'll be back. God bless and have a great day.